there fellow wackadoos, hello again. Welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Basic Asylum, where as always, I am the one, the only, the run of the mill, Dr. Doodle, and that's, I'm back, that's right, I'm back, you haven't got rid of me, just like that fungus on your toenails, and yes, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I'm back, this is episode 12, yeah, 10, 12, that's, that's this one right here, episode 12. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about graphics, uh, graphics language, ooh. Anyway, this is number 12. We're talking graphics. So, let's dive right in. Over here. Okay, so not sure how focused this is, but I guess it's get good as it's getting. Yeah, in any case, so we're in, uh, we got QBA 12 up here. As you can see, it's a demonstration of graphics sub-procedures. Uh, well, actually, it should be the demonstration of the library I've come up with, and that's graphics.sub. You'll see that. I'll leave a link. Just download that nonsense there, and you can use it. But as we see here, uh, we initialize the program. We've got, what, five subroutines here. There's arc, box, liner, tag, and pause. Now, pause, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on. It just pauses until you hit a key. Boom. Simple as that. Arc draws an arc and uh, part of a circle or a whole circle. Box draws boxes. Duh. Liner draws lines. Tag, that's uh, for text. And we'll, we'll run the program quick. You'll see what they do, and then we'll talk about it in a moment. So here we go. Run. There we are. All right. So first, a demonstration of graphic sub procedures. We want to go with number one, the arc demo. There we go. All right. As you see here, we've got a bunch of arcs. Well, the first one, that's a red circle. It's just one arc that goes a full 360 degrees. Now this one here, what, the purple one, that's like 90 degrees because that's zero degrees. That would be 90 to 180 over this way, 90 to 180. Uh, now here we got the green here is from zero to 180. That little small green one, arc. And then the yellow is 180 over to zero, or 360, I guess. It's 180 degrees to 360, whoop, that way. Now this is what? This is something like, yeah, well, more than 180, so uh, about 200 something, and then around 45 degrees there. Uh, so there you go. Well, now, the thing is, well, <laughs> QBASIC, well, actually, most programming languages, I guess, they deal with something called, well, not degrees, but radians. Now, we're all used to, like, 90 degrees, uh, 180, 270, 360, but radians is, is different altogether. There are two pi radians in every circle. And you're, what are you talking about? Uh, I know I... I I didn't understand when I first heard it, so hang on. We're just going to talk about that in a second. I'll explain what radians are all about, and we'll get back to it. All right, now we're working with the arc subroutine, which uses the circle statement, and as mentioned earlier, because Microsoft hates us, uh, it doesn't use de degrees, but instead uses radians. And I know you're thinking, like I was, what the stink is a radian? Well, anyway, here's, I'm going to try to demonstrate this here now. Okay, so here's, you got our circle, right? And now if that, if that's zero degrees here, then there's 90, this would be 180, and then down here is 270, all the way to 360, you, you know, degrees. Uh, 90, well, there's 45, and then what be 135, I guess, this way. But tick, 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 all the way around 360 degrees. All right, you know that. So what's a radian? Well, see this thingy here? Not exactly perfect, but we'll just, just humor me for a minute, play along. So let's say that's one radius, like the end here is right in the center of this circle, okay? So this is a radius. Now this is a radian. In other words, the distance that this radius traces out along the circumference, that is a radian. This is a radius, and that distance along the outer side, outer edge, excuse me, the circumference, that's a radian. And in every circle, there's two pi radians. 2 pi, pi, well we talked about pi earlier, that's 3.14 and a bunch of numbers. So 2 pi would be 6.28 um, something. But yeah, a little more than 6 radians around the cor this uh, entire circle. No matter what, what size it is, what the radius is, what the... I don't know why they didn't use diameters instead of radius. You know, like dia dia di diamonds? I, mean, I guess that's why they didn't use it. Any case, so a radian is just... The distance that one radius goes bloop, around the circumference of a circle. Radian. Okay, cool. Simple enough. But you know something? If I wanted to make a, a 45 degree, 90, I'm like, well, how many radians? I don't know how many radians that is. So I've created the arc routine. Part of the reason was to, to uh, convert from radians to degrees. And you do that by dividing one by the other. What? Uh, yeah, you divide radians 
two pi radians by 360 degrees, and you come up with a number like 0 0.0017, something like that. But you'll see when we cover it in the code. And then you just put in your, your number. If you want a 90 degree angle, you put in 90 degrees. It will convert it to however many radians. So you don't have to convert, but you can still do this with your hands if you want to. Uh, so yeah, let's get back to it. But so anyway, here we are. Uh, we're back here now. There's our arcs we drew. And now we hit the, any key here. Of course, using the pause function where it paused till we hit a key. There it is. Now, what did you just see there? Well, that was the same circle, but with a different aspect ratio. In other words, it, what the program did is it drew this green circle with an aspect ratio of, like, I think, half, 0.5, and then up to 1. That's a one like 1 high to 1 wide, the ratio of height, height to width, 1 to 1. Now, this is a ratio of 2, so it's twice as high as it is wide. So, 2 to 1, and then... The circle is one to one, and this oval here is one half to one. So there you go. It basically, it's just it's a loop that drew the same circle, but with the aspect ratio changing from 0.5 up to two, and that's just the ratio of height to width. There we go. So we'll go back to main menu here. And what's number two is the box demo. Boop. We'll hit two. There we up. Oh, enter. Now here we have a bunch of boxes, as you can see. We got a little blue one down here that might be hard to see, but it's just an empty box. Uh, here's one with a drop shadow. There's one with kind of a frame and a drop shadow. Actually, what that is is two boxes. You got a green box with the drop shadow and then an uh, empty green one on top acting as like a frame, if you will. Here's just a flat yellow one. That's nothing special. And then a purple one over here, again, with the drop shadow. All different colors, different styles. And these are all, you just uh, put in your, your coordinates, what option you want as far as drop shadow drop shadow or not, filled or not, and it draws it now an arc. Now here we go. There's another example. Here's all these boxes. They're all the same size. And the great thing about the, the box uh, subroutine is you can run it through a loop and the same size, same height, same width, but just a different location. Loop through, loop through, loop through. Change the colors, everything else. They all got drop shadows. This helps the, the process of drawing, well, repeated boxes and such. If you want, maybe you want to do a menu of different items and you want them all nice and you don't have to bother worrying, well, if I put this 100 pixels over, where does this this side go to. You just tell it how wide you want it, tell it where you want it, and it automatically figures the width, it figures the height, you don't have to worry about it. There's all that does with the box. Now the liner demo, this is kind of fun, I think. Number three, boop, okay. This draws lines, as you can see. And if you notice in, in screen mode 13, we've got 250 different colors. So that's each of the different colors you see and they kind of fade into nothing. Uh, some of these I don't find useful, but you just to give you an idea of what's available. Now let's hit this again here. Beep. Okay, now what is going on here? Well, you saw all the lines. Those are constant, uh, uh, straight lines or continuous lines. Here what we've got is... Uh, dotted lines obviously you can see but just by changing the the parameters you put into this you can have like for example this is one dot and 15 spaces one dot 15 spaces next is two two spots two dots two pixels and 14 spaces two dot pixels and 14 spaces. next is three pixels and what 13 spaces etc 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 and then we got this divided in, in well, there's one in 16, this is one in eight, one in eight, one in eight, and then it divides and subdivides. You'll get a better picture of when I do that right there. Now you see, for example, you put in a parameter and it gives you one pixel every 16 pixels. Now this green one here happens to be two pixels every 16, and there's three pixels every four pixels, et cetera, et cetera. And if you keep going up, you get almost a full line. Now here, this is one pixel every eight pixels. See here, one, two, eight, then there's another two every eight, three every eight. And you'll get a better idea when I do that. See here, that's, uh, yeah, that's 16 pixels wide. Each line is 16 pixels. So here's one in 16 pixels. There's two in 16, three in 16, et cetera. Now here's two. There's eight pixels over, eight pixels over. I, hopefully, I'm explaining this properly, but you can see it's divided and subdivided, subdivided. So you can come up with a line of different uh, different style. That In fact, the, the option is actually called style, line style. So you can also do something like why you would want to do this. I don't know. But instead of straight lines bouncing around, you see we've got the dotted lines, and you just select the style that you want. And you're good to go. So there's that for the, the liner. Boop. 
liner demo, the tag demo. I, I'm particularly proud of this one. This one's fun. Beep. This is text, but it's more than just text. Watch this. Check it out. Now, tech, okay, you've seen text before, but look at here. Here we've got first tag is vertical this way. Second tag is typical, like you can see. And the third tag is vertical that way. Now, that's pretty groovy, I think. I worked a while, quite a while to get this to work just right. But the idea is being you can do something like this. Now here we got a graph, of course, of some sales per, okay, sales by month, units, etc., month. But here, notice sales by month is vertical, this is horizontal, and month, January, February, March, etc., that's all vertical that way. So, like, you rotate minus one or zero or plus one to get the text however you want it. And not only that, but with text, typically you can put it once, what, one text one character over two characters three characters four characters well with this function you can put it by pixel one pixel over two pixel over so it gives you a finer control of where you actually put your text sometimes you may want to have it just in between the two characters and but you can't do it with typical text with this you can go typical typically a, char a character or a letter number is what, eight pixels wide, so you can move by four pixels, you can move by three, by two, whatever you want to do. That's the whole reason for creating this this routine. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory what you can do with it. So that's the tag demo. And now number five exits, boom, boom, there you go. So that's what the, this program does. And if we look here, we got view, subs. There's our, our sub procedures. Arc, box, liner, pause, and tag. Just to get te uh, pause out of the way, look at here. It's one line, sub, pause, do, loop, while, and key equals nothing, and sub. So basically, if you call the pause sub procedure, then it just pauses until you had a key. Any key, and then boop, exits back to the program. Simple as that. Uh, view subs, let's take a look at arc. And this one here, this sub procedure draws all of a... This sub procedure draws all or a portion of a circle on screen. Requires the following parameters. X is the horizontal position. Y is vertical position. R is the radius, you know, how big. Uh, C is the color. B is the gin point in degrees. Uh, e is the end point in degrees. And then A is the aspect ratio. Again, we talked about whether it's one to one or uh, one to two, two to one, wide. It's, it's basically it's round. Is it an oval? Is it taller? Is it wider? So the way this works, here's our the start of our sub procedure, sub arc, and then x, y, you know, all these parameters you see in here. Now, if B is greater than 359, in other words, if it's more than 360 degrees, we subtract 360 degrees. This is so it doesn't end up drawing around around 17 times. If you've got a parameter of 3,000 in there, it's not going to spin around. It just starts at whatever 3,000 ends up on. So say you're, you're, you're drawing an arc from 0 to 9, 40. 0 to 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, eh, whatever that is, and then all the way up to 359, 360, and then, well, 370, 380. Well, that's, that's going to be, basically, you're starting back at 10, 20, 30 degrees again. So that's the point of this. If B, the begin point, is greater than 359, then it, it just subtract 360 to put it back where it would normally be. Likewise, if it's less than 0, we add 360 for the same reason. And then, of course, the end point, same thing. If it's greater than 359, you've gone all the way around. So start over at zero. And likewise, if it's less than zero, you've gone down to zero. You want to add 360 to just start drawing around the other way. Okay. Now, we're converting de degrees to radians here because we enter our, our values in degrees. But, of course, circle needs radians. So what we do, we take our... B, what's B? Oh, begin point and radians. It's B, t there's the number I was talking about. The B times point zero one seven five, and the end radians is E times point zero one seven five. In other words, we're entering be beginning point in degrees. We multiply by this to get the radians. Likewise, we end the end point in degrees multiplied by that gives us the end in radians so that we could then call the circle statement x, y, uh, there's the radius, color, begin in radius, end in, begin in radians, end in radians, and the aspect, you know, parts like that. Simple, but, but it, you'll find it quite helpful because I don't know how many times I want to draw an arc in the past. Well, how many radians is that? I don't know. Now I don't need to. I just... Use this subroutine, we're good.
So back to subs. What else we got here? Box. Boop. Another simple one. Uh, look, see, this sub procedure draws a box on screen in a given graphics mode. It requires the following parameters. X is the left side horizontal position. Y is the top side position. Uh, w is the width of the box. H the height of the box. And like I mentioned before, if you want to move a box around the screen or something or have a bunch of repeated ones, you can just put in whatever width you want, whatever height you want. You don't have to worry about if this is 15 pixels over, where do I put this side? No, just tell it how wide you want it. It'll automatically figure the width. Same with the height. If you want it so many pixels down and you want it 10 high or 20 high, this pro sub procedure will automatically calculate that for you. C, obvious, color, that's pretty simple. Uh, then we got O, which is the option, and whether you want fill or shadow. Zero is an empty box, it's like that blue one we saw first. Empty box, no drop shadow. One is a filled box with no drop shadow. And then th two is a filled box with a drop shadow. So here's the start of the subroutine here, sub procedure, excuse me. Uh, sub box, X, Y, W, H, C, O, and shared. Now the drop shadow, this is shared so that we can set the drop shadow color in the main program. So for example, if you've got a, a purple black ground, for example, bright purple, well then you'll want the shadow to be a dark purple, not blue, not green. If you have a bright green background, you'll want the shadow to be a dark green. In other words, it, you can set the drop shadow to be the appropriate color depending what your background is going to be. And you'll see as we get to the, the, the demo for that. But we select case O for option, and if case is zero, then we draw a line, whatever parameters we put in there, whatever color, and then it's going to be a box. Now, you've seen line. We've we used line to draw boxes in the past, but in this, well, this routine, we don't need to uh, specifically put in the B, the BF. It's already in there. This is just for drawing boxes. So if it's option zero, we've got a box that's not filled. It's just an empty box, no drop shadow. In case one, we got box fill. So that's a filled box, filled with whatever color you decide. And then it, this one here, case two, what that is, that first here, here drops, it draws the drop shadow. Yeah, the drop shadow first, and then your box. So what's happening, wherever you want your box, let's say X is 10. Here we draw the drop shadow X plus five, so it's five pixels over, and Y plus five, so it's five pixels down. That's why the drop, sh drop shadow is over to the right, down a bit, because we draw the drop shadow first in whatever color, five pixels over, plus five, and five pixels down, plus five. Then we draw whatever box you want. There's the line, uh, X and Y position, the width and the height, and then color and fill. So that's all there is for the, the box. And again, in the demo, we'll see how we can, we can make use of this. What's next? View subs, liner. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this one's a little more complicated. So this sub procedure draws a line on screen in a given graphics mode, and it requires the following parameters. X1 is the start horizontal position. X2 is the end horizontal position, duh, it's pretty simple. Y1 is the start vertical and Y2 the end vertical position. CS is the color and an optional style of the line. Now entering an integer value for CS draws a straight continuous line in the color specified by that value, including a fractional part for CS from 0 0.01 to 0 0.26, draws a line in that same color, but in the dotted or dashed style as determined by the value entered. Uh, what? Well, like you'll see in the in the in the demo part there. Again, where you if you, in simple terms, if you just want to draw a line with this, you'd put in the color that you want: red, green, blue, whatever, and that'd be it. You'd put say 14 for yellow, uh, 12, 12 for bright red. But if you wanted a dash line, you put 14.01 or 12.002 or 8.9 or not, not actually 0 0.26 is the most 8.21 whatever whatever corresponds to the style that you want and here is how we do this yeah this is a mess I know it's going to take forever to get through it uh, now down this this part here this you can just delete you don't it's just for my reference, these are all powers of 2. So 2 to the 0 is 1. Uh, 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 
times itself, or not times itself, times one instance of two is two. Two times two is four. Two times two times two is eight. Two four eight. Two times two times two times two is sixty. There you go. Those are the powers. You get it. And we use that those numbers here. Bless you, my wifey just sneezed. Beautiful young bride's got the sneezies out there. Bless you, baby girl. In fact, I think she had the sneezies in my first video. Hmm. Maybe she's allergic to me. Anyway, so here we go. We are da, 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 subliner x1, y1, x2, y2. That's the start and finish of both, you know, the horizontal, vertical. And then color and style. Now, for color, we just do this fix CS. What is fix? Well, all that does, it truncates any decimal part. So if you put in 14.2, uh, 13.9, this just cuts out the point and gives you the first part, the decimal. That's how we find our color from one to zero to, well, actually 250 in screen mode 13. We can have any color up to that if we want. Now, CS, we convert this to string and put it in here in the CS dollar sign variable. Reason we do that is so that we can search through a base. In other words, it goes the mid function here. What that does is searches through the CS variable, whatever value you happen to put in there, and it looks at the first digit, the second digit, third digit, until, aha, I found a decimal point. Now it knows decimal is 1, so if decimal is 1, then S equals S plus mid, and you, what is this? Well, let's look, take a look at mid, and it'll give you an idea. Help, mid. Mid function returns part of a string, a substring. And the way it works is the expression, the what you're searching for is the variable that you want to find. Like if the variable is hello, if you wanted the first character to be H, the second character to be E, etc. The, the second two characters would be EL. So here's our string expression, start point and length. Do we want to start from the first character, the second character, the third character, and how many characters? One character? Two characters? Anyway, what we we're doing essentially is we're scanning CS. We just pretty much ignore everything until we hit the decimal point because we always we already figured that out. That's the color. We're done with that information. Now we hit our decimal point. We want to know what's after that. And if the decimal point is one, then S equals S plus mid. In other words, it whatever the rest of the the variable is past that dollar decimal point, it stuffs it into S. We convert this to text so that we can use the mid function to search through. It doesn't work with numbers. Why? I don't know. Now, once we've got, we figured out what S is, we look at this chart. So if S, in other words, if you put 17.01, then S equals one. If you put 3.02, then S equals one plus two. If it's whatever 0 0.03, then S equals one plus two plus two. Notice powers of, of two, there's power uh, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, if you notice, this is getting longer. That that will be one pixel out of sixteen. This is the first two pixels out of sixteen. These are the first three pixels out of sixteen. First four pixels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, as you use one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how many pixels you're going to display out of that whole line. So here, 4 out of 16 pixels would be displayed. You'd have 4 pixels, and then what, uh, 12 blank, 5, you'd have 5 pixels, and then 11 blank, etc., etc., etc. Then as we go up to 1, 11, 12, etc., etc., well, now it's instead of out of 16, we'd have 1 out of 8. And you saw earlier how it was broken down. But, yeah, it's pretty complicated. Look at the code, and hopefully by looking through it, and oh, all these ugly numbers here. But uh, basically what you're doing, it, it looks at the parameter that you put in there. If it happens to be 0.16 or 0.17, whatever, it then sets S to whatever value you need to create that line style. Uh, hopefully that made sense. So if K cells, in other words, if there's, if there's no part, no fractional point after the decimal, then it just draws a line in whatever color you want. However, if there is something here, then it sets S to the right, right value. We draw the line, start, start X, start Y, end X, end Y, whatever color, and then the value, or the style. 
reason I did this was if we look at the line line statement here you can see it includes a style right there so you can include step which we won't worry about that but right now but line goes with the start x start y end x end y color just like you saw we're not doing boxes we got a separate routine for boxes and then their style now, i didn't want you to have to put the style in there every time you want to use this this line function or sub procedure excuse me it would kind of defeat the point of uh, defeat the purpose of creating this the idea is to simplify it so if you want to just draw a line well then you put in your coordinates and then the color if you want to draw a dash uh, draw a dashed line then you put in your coordinates your color point something it will automatically say oh we got a decimal here we got a fractional part let's fig uh, analyze this and figure out how we should draw this line so that's what it does for us escape when we go to the few subs uh, tag this one is is pretty complicated too a little simpler than liner but here we go we set everything to integer by default just for speed and this sub procedure draws text at various locations on screen in specific colors and rotations. It requires the following parameters. Tag name, that's the text that you want to display on screen, like tag 1, tag 2, tag 3. Uh, X is the horizontal position, Y is the, the vertical position. Divert, I spelt that wrong. Vertical, I'll fix that. Uh, now C is the color of the text, all pretty simple. Now R is rotation, and it works like this. Negative 1, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, so the text would be like that. 0, no rotation, just like typical text. And then 1, rotate 90 degrees clockwise, this way, boop, like that. So we start here with de -de 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 -de, sub tag. There's a tag name. That's the text you want to display. X and Y is where it is on screen. C is the color and rotation. Then we got uh, locate and print the tag name. What this does, it t you put in the tag name or the, the text that you want to display. It prints it on screen in this location. Then we check the length of the tag. So if it's um, hello, H-E-L-L-O, that's five five characters we add one so we have space on either side to put it with this way we can place it on screen and we won't cut off the letters so now we know the length of the text so again it, it, by b-y-e is three b-y-e so we add one so four now that's enough room for three characters plus a space in between and we read them tag name what's this well we're creating a an array called tag name we're redimming it because we've already used it for other, or may have already used it for other other tags. Uh, we're just restarting it, cleaning out, starting fresh. Length of the tag times 77. Why times 77? Well, it all has to do with the fact that how we're saving the data. In the past, we have used get and paste to get like a basically a snapshot of of what's on screen, a, an image, a circle, a line, what have you. But here what we're doing is, let's say, all right, display. That's the word we want to display or show on screen. What it does, it goes pixel by pixel by pixel by pixel and checks, is there is this blank or is there a dot there? Is this blank or is there a dot there? And it saves all that information into an array. Once it has that information, it then displays it out, draws it back pixel by pixel by pixel. Uh, pretty much, if you've ever looked at that uh, uh, old-time newspaper print, if you look close at it, or even TV screen, it's not one image, it's a bunch of little dots, a bunch of pixels. So this, instead of saving a snapshot of one location, it goes through this this area and checks what's that? What color is this pixel? What's the next one? That what's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? Once we have that information, we can draw it out line by line by line by line. Or if we want a vertical, we draw a line by line by line by I guess column by column by column by column. And you'll see that in the yeah the next yeah four y x four y two four x two next x next two. What this is doing here. This is where uh, it's printed out. We've redimmed our array. Now it's it's looking through pixel by pixel, adding one each time to the array, and tag name one equals point x x two y two. Point. What that does is you give it a, a 
a parameter, uh, I'm sorry, a number to indicate how many pixels over, how many pixels down. It looks at that point, and what color is it? Is it black? Is it white? Is it green? Is it whatever? It saves that information in the tag name array. The, the P sets that to zero. In other words, after it saved the information, clears it out, wipes it out so that once you're done, it's gone. You can then print it anywhere you want to. Next X, so it goes to the, all the way across. Next X, next, next, next X. Once it's done the whole, uh, where is it? Eight to, to nine times this. Then once it's done the whole line, it drops down the next line, drops down the next line. And that's what for Y, it's a loop within a loop essentially. But what this section is doing, it's scanning pixel by pixel, whatever text is on screen and where there's a, a, a point, a drawn point, it records that data, puts it in the array called tag name. And then later we go to here. This is where we, uh, we draw the, the, the text back on screen in the form of our tag. If the case is negative one, then we want to turn this way. So instead of draw, we, we recorded it or we saved it this way, but we'll draw it this way. If this makes any sense, we're drawing from the bottom up and then over, up, bottom, up, over, bottom, up, over. If it's zero, if our option is zero, we don't want any rotation. We saved it this way, so we just draw it out the same way, across and down, across and down. It pretty much like a carriage return when you're typing something. Then, of course, if case is one, that's the opposite. We're spinning clockwise. So we, we've saved our data, and now we're going to draw it out for y2 equals 15 to step 7. You'll see... I, I, the numbers are odd, but it just that's the way they all worked out. And if you want... Change the numbers around. You'll see how if you if the, the length of the of the array is not long enough, it'll run out of data and it'll give you an error. But in any case, what it's doing at this point is it's drawing. We want to rotate this way, so it's drawing top left down, moving over this way, next line down, this way, next line down, next line down, next line down. This is how we get the text to rotate this way or that, and select and then end sub. And again, we'll see this in further detail when we get to the actual uh, demos of these these particular uh, sub procedures. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm with it. I'm going to take a break for a second. Hang on. All right, kiddos. Uh, well, we've seen uh, what the various sub procedures or or if you prefer our library functions, what they do, how they work, and such. Uh, now we need to see how to actually use them. And I'm sure we covered some of this in the past already, uh, but just to be thorough, we'll start from the top here. Of course, we initialize our program, set to all, integer, all variables to integer by default. Here we declare our subs, arc, box, line, or tag, and pause. Pause again just pro pauses the program. Uh, now we go to the main program here. Let's scroll down a bit. So our main program, uh, we do begin of a loop here. We loop down here, back up to do. We clear the screen. A color 14 that turns the text uh, to yellow. Uh, locate and print demonstration. You've seen all this earlier in the video. This is just the menu that it displays. So now let's take a look at our actually. Here we go. Subroutines. Here's the first uh, arc demo, which we'll run this, and you'll see exactly what this does. There's first page and second page run okay so we do the uh we're looking at the arc demo Boop, right there bang and we covered all this before but there are the arcs or the the circles well arcs and circles we draw and then of course there's the where we're changing the aspect ratio so five to exit and the first thing you saw there what first page of the demo uh we just have an arc this again this is calling the arc sub procedure with the x coordinate of 160 at the middle of the screen, 100 down, that's the middle of the screen again. Uh, this is the radius of 50, color 4, which is red. Now start and stop, we start at 1 degree, end of 360, so full circle. One's the aspect ratio, meaning it's round, 1 to 1. Next one, uh, again, 161. These are all centered on, in the center of the screen. Different uh, various um, radius, excuse me, and different colors. But there's the radius, there's the colors, and different start points. Here we start at 0 to 180, so 0 to 180, uh, 180 to 0, back the other way, 90 to 180, so 90 to 180, and then 225 to 45, so from here to whoop, that one. Basically, just we, we call our, our arc sub procedure, and again, notice no parentheses to worry about, just commas. Commas are easy to write down by the space bar, so data, 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 put that all in. 
and it, it brings up our, our the arcs we want to draw. Pause to pause till the next screen. Now for here, again, uh, this is for A equals, uh, for A, a and that's what uh, single precision with the, the uh, exclamation point there, a equals 0.5 to 2, step 0 0.03. So first time through, it'll be 0 0.5. Next time we add 0 0.3, so 0 0.53, then 0 0.56, 0 0.5, what, 9, all the way up to 2. All it's doing is changing the aspect ratio. That's width to height. So you saw the green went whoop, like that. Well, we call our arc 160, 100, again, centered in the screen, uh, uh, radius of 100, color 2 is green, 0 to 359, that's the start to end, and then the A. Now, the A is the only thing that changes here, the aspect ratio. Now, from Z equals 1 to 1, 10,000, next Z, again, just waste time so you can actually watch it happen. Otherwise, it would happen that quick, and you wouldn't, what's going on here? What is this? So, uh, we go through first is 0.5, we call our arc with the aspect ratio of 0.5, next A back up here, now it's 5.03, and then 5.06, etc., etc., all the way through the loop until we get up to 2, pause, and then return. Boom. That's it for the arc demo. Simple enough. Let's take a look at the next. The next is the box demo, and we'll run that quick again, just a refresher to see what goes on here. I'll run box demo. Boop. All right, here again. Here's our boxes. I think this is the first one here. That's just a little kind of aqua blue empty box. Uh, there's a red one with the drop shadow, purple drop shadow. Here's a flat yellow one, no drop shadow, nothing special about that. Here's a green one with a drop shadow, and it looks like a framer there. That's actually another of these option one empty uh, empty boxes on top of the first one there to, to act as a frame. There's all kinds of things you can do. Put text in there, put images, whatever, what have you. But that's the basic idea is you can draw just random boxes, different styles, different colors, different locations. And now this is page two. Well, if you notice, we got all these, these boxes. They're actually black boxes, but with different colors inside them. And it's got the gray drop shadows on a white screen. Uh, if, and again, they're all the same width. They're all the same height. All we're doing is looping through to draw this one, two, three, four, five. Come down the next row, one, two, three, four, five. Next row, one, two, three, four, five. And the idea being is, uh, let's say we're starting maybe... Oh, I'm up the camera. Maybe this is 200 pixels over. Now, how I want the width of whatever... How do I add what if I'm starting here to whatever? You don't have to worry about that. The subroutine takes care of all of it. It just draws different boxes, and of course you can change the, your at your width and height anytime you wish. But this simplifies the procedure of drawing uh, um, repeated boxes and things like that. So back to five, we'll exit. And to accomplish this, here we are at the box demo. First page, again, those all those random uh, boxes here. You saw box zero. So, now this is interesting. Zero, zero is the top left. 320 is the width, and 200 is the height. So this is a, a box that is full screen. It's eight, which is that, like, uh, I guess a dark white, you'd call it. And then one, uh, is it's got no drop, sh drop shadow, which you wouldn't see anyway. That would be off screen. But essentially, that just paints the whole screen white. So that drop shadow will show up in kind of a gray. Now we call our boxes here. Now, first box, 100, 100. That's, okay, so 100 pixels over, 100 pixels down. It's 20 wide, oh, uh, 20 wide, about 20 high. Four is red, and option two, that's the drop shadow. So that's that box that was kind of in the center with the black drop shadow. Box 220, 130, what's over here, and down this way, 10, 10, 3, and 0. Yeah, that's it's 10 by 10. 3 is the aqua color. 0 means there's just an empty box. No fill, no drop shadow. Box 225 by 20, uh, so 2 there, 50, 50. It's a square. Uh, 5 is what? A purple color? Yeah, it's a purple color. 2 is the drop shadow. So that was a purple and it was up here. A box 50 by 140 is here. Down 140. It's 60 wide, 15 high. 14 is yellow. And that's option 1, which is just a flat box. No drop shadow, but it's filled. This is the this is the green box you saw up here. It looked like it had a frame in it with the drop shadow, option two. Then we draw this is the, the same, this is lighter green, empty. So that's the lighter green one that, that acts as a frame inside of the other box. So that's one, one way you can use this. And, and of course, the sky's the limit. Your, your imagination's the limit, I guess. It, basically, here's the, the procedure. You put your box, you put your parameters, comma, 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 and there you go. Simple as that. Pause. That waits until we hit enter, or any key, really. And then go to the next second page. That's where he held the boxes that were uh, uniform. 
and you start here with the width set to 50, height set to 20, and drop shadow set to 7. Now that's because we have a white background and we want a like a gray gray drop shadow. We wouldn't want black. We want it's lighter, so we want a lighter shadow, which is that kind of gray. Uh, box zero zero again, top left corner, 320, 200. It's the whole width of the screen. Drop shadow uh, plus eight. Oh yeah, whatever the drop shadow color happens to be, we add eight so we know that it matches. Like if the drop shadow was seven, we add eight to that, we'd have what, um, a, a, yeah, my math, 15, which is white. If this was four, we'd add eight, eight to this, and then the drop shadow would be uh, 12 in order to make it like a right, lighter red. And just basically, this just whatever the drop shadow, shadow is, we add eight, it gives us a lighter color, a lighter shade of the same color. And then option one is just a flat box, so but it's filled. Now, notice we got 4y, 4x, and then next, x, next, y. This is a loop inside a loop, so it goes through, and the first thing it does is 4x equals 10 to 300, step 60. So in other words, <coughs> excuse me, it starts at 10, up to 300, step 60. So it does 1 at 10, then it goes plus 60, which is 70, plus 60, which is what, 130, plus 60, which is 190. This is, draws the... the rows of, of boxes when it gets up to 300 that's about five boxes it drops uh next x then it goes up to y and does the whole thing over uh so five boxes five boxes five boxes five boxes and here we got c as the color so c equals c plus one whatever happens b we add one and if c is greater than 15 white then c equals one back to blue that's how the, the boxes become different colors and now we go down, where is it? Uh, okay, the box, X and Y, wherever the box happens to be, the width and height, the color that we select with C, and then two, that's the drop shadow option. Next, we got same same coordinates, same width and same height, but zero, with zero, that option zero means an empty box. So this is just black, empty black, black box. It serves as the black frame around all the boxes. And again, pause. So I think that's the end for return. Yep, that's it for the for the box demo. Simple enough. Now on to the liner demo. All right, here we start the liner demo. And the first page, well, we'll run this again, just a reminder, see what's going on here. Run the three liner demo, okay. All right, so of course, vertical lines, uh, just one pixel wide, and they're just um, the different colors. You can come from zero, I'm sorry, excuse me, one to 256, which I don't know who would want these darker colors, but hey, you might need them for whatever you're doing. In any case, those are your options in screen mode 13. Again, 12, you got a higher resolution, but only 16 colors, so it's a trade-off. You can have more colors or more resolution, but not both. Next page, what do we got? These are, okay, again, we've seen this. Well, we talked about this earlier. This is the dotted and dashed lines. Uh, more dotted dashed lines. There's the lines that separate, show 16 pixels apart. Give you an idea where it's divided. And then, of course, the bouncing pixels. So, uh, bouncing lines, I should say. Uh, five to exit. And we're back to our line of demo. So for the first page, that was just those vertical lines. It's simple enough, clear screen, 4Z equal, equals one to 256. It would calling liner, which draws the lines. This is our X coordinate. Zero is the top top side of the screen. Uh, Z is the, the same coordinate. So it's ver over here at one, starting at one. 200 is the bottom of the screen. So one zero up here, one 200 down here. And with zero equals, uh, that's the color, 0 plus Z, so zero, start at 0 plus Z is 1. So the first time through, we're at coordinate 1, 0, and 1, 200, 0, or I'm sorry, we add Z, so that's color 1, or blue. Boom, one vertical blue line. Next Z, we go back up, this is now 2, so the X coordinate is now 2, 1 pixel over, color is 2, which is a green, and then Next Z, next time through is three, which is that aqua. Uh, four is a red, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All it does is draws those those pixels, yeah, the lines on screen. But again, you can see no parentheses, nothing to worry about, just the commas, and you're good. And you can also uh, you can add like for example zero plus Z. It doesn't have to be just a number. It can be an expression that that evaluates to some uh, some integer number. Now for the second page, uh, clear the screen. And then we're doing liner, whatever, however. But if you notice, 1.01, 2.02, 3.03. Of course, the, this number here, the integer part, that's the color. And the fractional part, because we've got a fraction on here, 
that tells it we're not drawing just a straight line, but a dashed line or dotted line. One pixel in 16, two pixels in 16, three pixels in 16, four pixels in. Here's liner. We're calling our liner sub procedure. There's our x coordinate, and yes, x coordinate and y coordinate. Start x coordinate, y coordinate. Here's our finish x coordinate and finish y coordinates so start to finish wherever your coordinates happen to be there's the color you want there's the style you want so we this we just if you notice we're going up by one one two three four five color and same with the with the decimal point zero one point zero two this is one pixel per 16 two yeah one pixel per 16 two pixels per 16 three pixels per 16 etc etc all the way down the line so it's pretty straightforward you would just Call line as almost as if these sub procedures were built in keywords built right into QBasic. You just call liner your parameters separated by uh, uh, yeah separated by a comma, no parentheses to worry about. And simple as that. Pause. We pause until the next page, third page. It's the same idea. It shows the the uh, the lines, but this way this time instead of or uh, diagonal like this they're all across the top and again one is blue and 0 0.01 one pixel and 16 two is green two pixels and 16 three and three and three etc etc all the way down we've seen all this before so i won't go over that too much but this is how we call it then we pause and for x equals 0 to 300 320 steps 16 in other words for every every from 0 to 300 we're going to draw lines every 16 lines that's the vertical lines every 16 spaces and then the liner x whatever the x happens to be 0 to 200 so straight down 8 is a gray and the next x pause fourth page what's this now this is um hmm, uh, no. okay yeah this is the the lines bouncing around the screen now if you if not actually seen my previous video where I've got images and, and lines and such bouncing around the screen. Yeah, I might want to take a look at it, but you don't have to. I'll, I'll, it's, you can work out what's happening here. Now, so we look here, we got X1, Y1, H1, and V1. This is the, uh, yeah, this is the start X position, the start Y position, uh, the, yes, the uh, horizontal direction and vertical direction of the, the left hand side of the line or the, the start of the line the first line now x2 y2 they're the other end of the line and the other direction minus one and plus one so if h is one then it's moving to the right if it's negative one's moving left if v is one it's going down if it's negative one it's going up so basically these just set up the parameters we want before we start bouncing the lines around the screen so start uh start the, the one end of the line, the other end of the line, the first end of the second line, and the other end of the second line. Boom, there's all our parameters. Now do if x1 is less than two or x1 is greater than 318. In other words, if it's oh, the, the first end of the line is over here, or if it's over there, then we take h, which is the horizontal direction, left or right, h1, and multiply by negative one. So if it's 1, it becomes negative 1. If it's negative 1, it becomes 1. This is what bounces it back and forth. And then V is the same. Y is, is vertical up and down. So for the start point, end point, start point, end point of both lines. Once we got our, our, um, yeah, our variable set, what direction we want and like that, we just add X1 to X1, whatever it is now, plus H1. So if it's if it's positive 1, then it moves over to the right one. If it's negative 1, it moves to the left. Uh, Y1 equals Y1, whatever it is now, plus V1. So if it's positive 1, it moves down. If it's negative 1, it moves up. Same for the other end, and then the first end of the next line, first end of the second line. Uh, again, this is all repetition. You could just look at that that line there and these lines here and that would be the the first point on the screen that's bouncing around this is the second point that's on screen bouncing around and then we draw lines right here we call it liner we draw lines between those two points and for z equals one to five thousand next z again just to waste time so you can actually see what's happening next we call liner x1 y1 x2 y2 zero so that's a black line same thing here x3 y3 x4 y4 zero and th these erase the lines are on screen so you don't get them 
all like they pile up on top of each other. It basically just erases what's there first, recalculates everything, puts it in the next position, erases it, and then recalculates, puts it in the next position, leaves it there so you can see it, erases it over and over again. Loop while in key equals. I, I could have actually just done pause there, but uh, anyway, so clear screen after we're done here and return. That is the end of the liner demo. Now the tag demo, we'll run this again quick just for a minor boop here we are we hit four for tag boop okay the first page again we've seen we got first tag till this way second tag flayed across and then third tag this way so or rotated left and right next page here's our graph if you can notice we got here's the sales by month which is rotated left or counterclockwise i should say units uh cut different colors okay here are the months that are rotated that way horse uh to the right clockwise and then month different colors different locations uh, this is the line of the actual graph this is the data we're trying to represent uh, but uh, well if you notice for example see how units and uh, times 100 the X is not directly under the U one is not directly under the N zero is not directly it's shifted half a, a character uh, half the character over so you can center it because otherwise you'd have an extra letter hanging out here or an extra letter hanging out there. This allows you to, you don't have to just go one cor one cor character by next character, next character. You can go pixel by pixel by pixel to get more precise. And in fact, I'll show you this here before I forget. I meant, I meant to show these earlier. We'll take a quick detour here. View, subs, uh, tag. And where is it? Da -da -da -da. All right. You notice... This line right here with the apostrophe that's remmed out. In other words, it's disabled for the moment. We don't need it. But what I'll do is delete that, re-enable this line. And now we'll run the program again. All right, so for tag demo. Notice that little blue dot there, little green dot there, little uh, aqua dot there. That is where you're actually positioning the 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 text or the tag if you will see in other words uh, this is where the computer references it and from there once you tell it where you want it it draws the the tag this way here just draws it this way and here it draws this way down like that basically it gives you an idea if you want to line up two lines but have one one pixel over you can use these as reference to figure out exactly where you're positioning it. and if we look here again there's all the points where you're positioning the different things this just gets in the way in my opinion but it is interesting or useful if you want to if you're designing your screen you want to make sure these are all lined up or not lined up you can just re-enable that line and you'll see the point where it actually see this for example the 12 is just slightly higher than the red text there so we'll go uh, five to exit this boom 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 and the back to this line we put a posture to rem that out or comment it out disable it now uh, run again for the tag demo again you see the tags and there's the the graph we came up with so and here five boom boom hey gypsy Gypsy's over there crying to me. And so view subs QBC. Okay, now we we're looking at the tag demo. So we got tag demo. First thing we clear the screen. This is the first page, the color 15 that, that sets the text color to white. So again, so that we can uh, get the right colors when we when we run the the tag sub procedure. So we call tag with the text first tag that's the tag with the text we want to show the location x and y uh, one is the color which happens to be blue negative one rotates it counterclockwise then tag again call it sub procedure second tag uh, 30 80 that's the, the location two is a green color and zero means no rotation dick gypsy don't you chew that good girl good girl gypsy she loves chewing my, my cards tag again third tag and the, the coordinates, uh, three is that aqua color, and then one is the rotation this way, so clockwise. There's the first page, simple enough. Next, we clear the screen for the second page. And this is a bit involved, but it's just, it's all repetition, really. Line by line, we're, we're doing box zero, zero, so top left, 319 by 199, so it's a full screen. Seven is that dark black, gray color, excuse me. 
mask. Zero means no drop shadow, which as we discussed, you wouldn't see the drop shadow anyway because it's off screen. Next tag, sales by month. That was the pink sales you saw up here. A location 8 by 42. 12 is like a light red kind of pinkish. A negative ones, uh, rotation, a counterclockwise rotation. Then tag January, the, the location, the color, that's yellow and one, so that's option one, no, ro I'm sorry, rotation to the right, clockwise, this, this is January, February, all the months that you saw down along the bottom. Okay, scroll down some more down to December. Now tag 12, 11, 10, 9, that's uh, the number of units sold times 100, and we're looking at location 20, so it's 20 pixels, yeah, 20 pixels over. 28 pixels over. Oh, right, because uh, see, this is two digits and these are only one digit, so we got to move eight pixels farther because each each number is eight pixels wide. In other words, if we just did these at 28, it would look like this. You'd have them lined up with the first digit. We want to line up with the second digit, so we put it over eight more character, more eight more pixels to line up with the second digit. Good. Now there's the, the 40, 50, 60, 70. It's just down 10 pixels each time. Three is the color, which is the aqua color. Zero, no rotation. And then we got do, 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 tag month and X by 100. And again, remember we had month. It's not here. We got the X right underneath the M. So we could either go like that or have the X under the zero and that, then the zero would line up. But we don't want that. We want to split the difference. Well, with, with tag, we can. If we just put a print screen, or I'm sorry, print text there, it would be this column or that column. But here we can put it pixel by pixel. And again, units. So sales by month times 100 units. Now here, this section is the gray grid lines. This is what you would have if you use the typical line statement instead of liner subprocedure. And again, parentheses, parentheses, where this dash is, parentheses, parentheses. But with the liner uh, subroutine, subprocedure, procedure, excuse me, we're just doing a loop for 42 to 282, step 10. In other words, 10 spaces of, uh, apart. Liner Z10, Z160, and then uh, color 8, which is a gray, and the next Z. So it's just a choo -choo 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 -choo. And same here. This is for the horizontal line, step 10, blah, 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 blah. And we go 42. There's the, the X and the Y. The, uh, yeah, start X and Y, end X and Y, the color, and just get, go through the loop. Now, that draws the grid. And then the green graph lines. Do, 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 Here's again liner. Instead of calling line with all the parentheses, look at look how ugly that is and how again, where is the, the open parentheses? See way up here, but top line somewhere. No, you just use liner, comma, 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 you're all set to go. So we've got our different locations, uh, our different, um, what is it? Uh, oh, yeah, these are the actual lines, the green lines that go up and down, so various angles, whatnot. This is the, the first position, or the, the first point to the second point. Then we go from the second point to the third point. Then the third point to the fourth point, fourth point, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And 10 is green, so it just draws lines from each point to the next. That's the actual day that you show on screen. We pause till we hit a key, clear screen, and return. That's the end of it. And I believe that's the end of Yep, that's the end of the program. <sighs> Hopefully that's as clear as mud now, and that should give you an idea how to use the graphics library. If Well, this particular, this is an actual demonstration. Uh, your your uh, program wouldn't have any of this. So, for example, file, open, well, open graphics sub. Okay, we'll save that. And there it is. There's our arc, our box, our liner, tag, pause, and view subs. Here are all the same subs we just saw, arc, etc., like that. Like view subs back to the main sub. But here, this is the main program. And here's where you would enter whatever code you want to do. Uh, maybe you don't want to use the arcs at all. Maybe you don't want to do boxes. Whatever particular function you need, you just call it like we did with the previous program, and, and that's how you use the graphics library. Instead of having to put parentheses everywhere, you just call these sub-procedures here, don't need parentheses, and just put your parameters in there. And again, like with tag, you can rotate left, rotate right, you can 
position it more precisely. Pause is simple. It just pauses with the, instead of having to write a line to pause until you hit the key, you just put in pause and you got to pause. There's that. There you have it. That's that's our graphics sub. Uh, I'm sorry. That's our graphics library. Um, I can't think of anything else to tell you right now, but uh, yeah, so that, that'll do. And I guess it's time for a wrap up or have we done? No, we haven't done the um, superior yet, so we'll do that and then we'll go for a wrap up. Hang on just a second. Superiors! All right, gang, this time around, uh, our superior is none other than the craftsman himself here at Steady Crafting. The craftsman, Steady Crafting. It, I, I don't know how to really describe this gentleman. He, there is not a craft this gentleman does not excel at. He, uh, he, he makes little figurines and different, uh, sell, uh, well, in, in resins and, and in uh, all, all kinds of silicon rubber and stuff. Uh, look at here, he's got a bolt that it looks like a bolt, but it's actually rubber. This little uh, figurine here, uh, that's the, the free range chicken. You gotta check him out, he's great. But uh, this, he's all different painting and, and figures and just the greatest stuff. Oh, here he takes an old toy, an old green kind of UFO, makes it look like metal and, and just gives it a, a worn out look. Uh, uh, oh, okay, how to etch stuff in a metal brass copper that sort of thing yeah i cannot i cannot stress enough how amazing this gentleman is and you know his videos you just watch and you get mesmerized <laughs> he's got his own his own style his own vibe I, I don't know how to tell you you just need to check out the craftsman you will i guarantee you will spend hours upon hours watching his videos and loving every second of it he's just so talented i i can't say it enough you got to check out the craftsman it's like mostly figurines but you can mold anything you know here he's got uh where did i see it the yeah, look at like a, a rubber a, sorry uh, a flexible silicone quarter for gosh sakes freezing magnetic fluid who who else does freezing magnetic fluid it, it, you gotta love him because it's, he is just so talented you must check out the craftsman over at Steady Craft, and there's his page right there. And I will leave the link so you can click on that, and you'll thank me later because just such great stuff. Gotta check out the craftsman. All right, well that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, check out the graphics functions there, and uh, I, I hope you find them useful. Uh, and if anything else, if nothing else, might learn something from them. But you load it, run it, uh, tinker with it, and find out what what the code does, and that's the best way to learn. Again, check out Craftsman. Oh, the Craftsman. I'm telling you. Gotta check him out. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching once again. And I hope stay tuned for the next one. Who knows when that's going to come. But in uh, any case, should be something fun. That's all I got for now. So signing off. Hasta la pizza, baby.